Hello, this is Gernge with a quick tip video focusing on the UV projection node in Redshift. Now, to be clear, this isn't UV mapping. It's instead about the UV projection node, which allows us to control things like textures or gradient ramps in either UV space or world space here in Redshift. So I feel like this node is a bit of a sleeper hit when it comes to utility nodes. I use it frequently when I need to place gradients, for example, as masks, and it also works great at animating them in MoGraph situations. So let's take a look at a couple examples. Our first example will be a concrete wall with a leak texture applied to it. And let's just say I don't like the leaks reaching all the way down towards the bottom here. And I can't just move the texture upwards because the bottom seam will become visible. So if we set that back down to zero, what can we do? Well, we can use the redshift ramp and connect it into a projection node. So let's take a look at what that offers. Here in the projection node, we have the projection type set to planar, and it's using world space, not object or UV space. So if we zoom out to view the entire building, we can just get a sense. We can see here that the ramp is controllable and world coordinate units. So I'm gonna set that back to roughly where I had it, and we'll connect it into our leak texture. And if I plug that in, multiplying it, we can see that we just nicely mask off the bottom. I've got control over the ramp as well. If I just need to nudge it a little bit or maybe adjust the placement of the color knot. So if we come back out to our standard material here, we can see that that texture now nicely gradiates off from the bottom and it's no longer visible. Again, we've got a lot of nice handy control here. The next example here will be a bit more MoGraphy. So I've got your pretty standard spheres jammed into a volume builder and they're kind of doing their thing. Now in a situation like this, it might be pretty hard to UV unwrap this and depending on whatever else you've got going on in the scene, it might be tricky to say animate a gradient ramp. If we just come back to our gradient ramp, we can see, you know, I've got these two colors input. In this situation, we can see the color knots are moving in this direction here, which corresponds to the world axis, the object or the camera's orientation, I should say, are, you know, a bit off angle. So now taking a look at the projection node, which I've adjusted the rotation a bit, and I've also keyframed the offset value. If I scrub through my timeline now, you can see the green effect and the blue effect are gonna grow in orientation with the geometry. If I pull out of the camera, we can see this is a little bit subtle, but because we have the ability to rotate this gradient now, we can rotate it in place and it will follow along based on you know, the angle that we've dictated. Our third example will show that the UV projection node doesn't need to be used with gradients or ramps. It can work great on textures as well. Selecting one of these, we can see this is now set to cylindrical, and there are a variety of other options as well, like cubic, planar, or front mapping. In this particular situation, let's just quickly solo one of the diffuse colors from this. For context, I'm using this rusty sheet texture from Megascans, and we can see jumping back to cinema here that this is definitely not looking too great. The UVs on this particular kitbash object are absolutely smoked, so if you find yourself in a situation like this, maybe the UV projection node will help out. If we take a look through that, we can see that I've adjusted the scale parameters a bit, and in this case, I've also rotated on one of the axes. You'll get the hang of using this once you've got some experience with it yourself. Now, it is important when using the projection node on a set of textures that you select all of them and make these changes equally so that they all match up. Another thing I'm adding into this is a bit of surface imperfections, in this case, some scratches. So for this projection node, I've got things set to cubic and I'm also using a different set of transforms. So coming back to this standard material, now this isn't the most elaborate example. I've definitely pushed things a lot further in my own situations, but you might ask yourself, why not just use these projections here? Because, well, for the most part, we could have accomplished a lot of the same thing. But what's so powerful about this UV projection node is since it affords many of these same options that the tag affords, but within a node, it means that we can combine different projections and different projection methods within one single shader, which is gonna unlock a lot of power when it comes to texturing. 
So those are just a few quick examples I came up with on ways to use the UV projection node in your own scenes. I hope that this helps you a lot. This node is really powerful and I still come up with interesting ways to use it even to this day. So I hope you find this quick tip useful. I'd appreciate it if you liked the video and maybe share this with somebody that you think it would also help. And with that all said, thank you so much for watching.